Mikel Arteta's Arsenal project is only getting stronger. Last year it was top 4 contention, this year we're on a full on title charge. But what's next for the Gunners? Well today we'll find out about phase 4 of Arsenal's plan, discuss potential centre forward signings, get the latest injury updates on William Saliba and Thomas Partey and find out about the breaking news about Bakayo Saka. Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Babs14, welcome back to your boys channel and I hope you guys are doing sensational not too long and the Arsenal is back and the title charge will soon resume so as per smash a like on the video if you enjoy, subscribe to the channel if you are new and help your boy on his road to 200,000 subscribers. Let's start off with the breaking Arsenal news. The Arsenal players are finalising their international duties and one of those players has been Kieran Tierney. 90 minutes for Scotland and a 3-0 victory over Cyprus and today he was at it again 74 minutes this time as Scotland beat Spain 2 goals to nil. Tierney's not been an Arsenal starter because of Alexander Zinchenko but for Scotland he's got a different role. In the game against Spain playing as a left sided centre back and a back three. Despite playing that position this guy was bombing forwards and to massive effect. The standout moment for Tierney in the second half. He takes on Real Madrid's Danny Carvajal a multiple Champions League winner. He bursts past him and he showcases us that acceleration and that pace that Arsenal fans know he's got and he might not get the assist but it's all about Tierney he finds McTominay and it's Scotland 2-0 this is what Tierney's game is all about he is almost an old-fashioned winger Yes, Mikel Arteta loves that inverted approach, but sometimes in certain games, teams have different ways of playing and Arsenal need to have different ways of winning. This is why I still believe Kieran Tierney can still have a future at the Emirates Stadium. Tierney is still a fine player. That ability to overlap and make differences in the final third, it's exactly why he was starting for Arsenal in the past. But one of Tierney's unfortunate issues at Arsenal has been his injury record. And in this game taken off in the 74th minute, this is all because of Rodri, the same player that nearly injured Odegaard in the last game. Game. This time tried the same with Kieran Tierney, but Tierney walked off to a round of applause and thankfully walked over straight to the Scotland bench, indicating no serious injury. But what about Thomas Partey who was an unused sub for Ghana in their 1-1 draw with Angola? Well Ghana coach Chris Hutton has confirmed that Partey was not used against Angola as he had a small injury issue and they did not want to risk him. But Arsenal fans don't need to worry. Charles Watt confirms that Partey felt something in his right leg during the training session, but sources close to the player insist it is not a hamstring issue and believe he should be fine for Saturday's game at the Emirates Stadium. This is exactly why Arsenal sent over their physio Simon Murphy to make sure the party is kept safe and available. But what about William Saliba? Well he has spoken in a recent interview and he says, I'm always grateful to God to play for this club. Saliba loves Arsenal, Arsenal loves Saliba but what about his injury? Well, according to Chris Wheatley, William Saliba's injury sustained during a sporting game is not too worrying. The French defender is expected to be out of action for just a fortnight. As Chris Wheatley says he could be back sooner than that but the initial prognosis is a couple of weeks. There seems to be a few contrasting reports, in France they claim several weeks, in England they claim it's not too serious. The one thing I'll say though is the fact that there's been no massive reports from David Ornstein, Fabrizio Romano confirming any long term injury issue is definitely a positive. Arsenal have some massive games coming up and in that game against Liverpool Saliba's availability could be a game changer. You also have Granit Xhaka and here he was alongside Swiss and tennis legend Roger Federer and Xhaka played a full 90 minutes captaining Switzerland to a 3-0 victory over Israel. In terms of the Arsenal captain Martin Odegaard, he was involved in Norway's 1-1 draw with Georgia with some decent in-game stats of 95 touches, 66 accurate passes, 1 key pass, 4 out of 5 long balls, 3 out of 2 dribbles, 1 big chance missed but 7 ground doors won. In terms of that big chance missed, it was an absolute sitter and it's one thing that we've seen from Odegaard this season. He seems to struggle with first time chances. You go back to the game against Aston Villa, that massive chance he missed. This chance was somewhat similar. Odegaard's got such a complete game but one of the things that he definitely needs to improve is his first time finishing. You also had Leandro Trossard who came off the bench for Belgium as they beat Germany 3 goals to 2 and in 32 minutes once again Trossard got himself another assist. That is now 5 assists in 4 games. Turning into Meza Ozil, this guy is slowly becoming the assist king. Arsenal's number 10 Emil Smith Rowe has also been speaking and after scoring his first goal in 2023, Smith Rowe says I'm desperate to be playing. The team was doing really well and it's something that I want to be a part of. I've got to stay fit now for when the manager needs me. I'm trying to work as hard as I can so I'm ready to perform. 
We are now entering the running, the final 10 games of the season, the final stretch. In these most important moments, you need surprise heroes. And that's where I think you got Emil Smith role. He's different to Erdegaard and Fabio Vieira. He is that ball carrying player. But let's not forget, he's also got devastated ball striking. To score 10 league goals in your first full season certainly shows that. I'm still an Emil Smith role believer because at 22 years of age, he's shown us the quality. If he can stay fit and available, I truly believe Emil Smith role still has a part to play in the season. But what about the Arsenal star boy Bakayo? Osaka. Last time he was against Jorginho, this time against Alexander Zinchenko, as England beat Ukraine two goals to nil, and we witnessed a Bukayo Saka Blasic. An 8.8 .8 rating with one goal and one assist, two successful dribbles, 56 touches, 30 accurate passes, three key passes, two big chances created, and eight ground duels won. The assist was fantastic, a lovely cross to Harry Kane, but in terms of the goal itself, it was devastating, it was a screamer. It reminded me a bit of Iron Robin, as Saka describes, yeah, I got it from Hendo, turn and banged it. Saka was once again England's standout player and he was awarded the official player of the match. In fact, in 26 England caps, Bakayo Saka has been man of the match nine times. His record for England is outstanding, averaging 0.31 goals per game. That's the highest out of any of England's current wide forwards. He's got the creativity, he's got the ball strike and this guy has so much to offer. It's very easy to forget that once upon a time, this guy was a left back. As Ben Chilwell says, I can't believe he played at left back when he can do that. Such a great talent. I think everyone can see what he gives us on the pitch. He is one of the best people I've met in football. From a left back prospect to one of the best wide forwards in world football, we've seen this all before. The example of course is Gareth Bale. As Spurs he started off as a left back. He could barely win a game but then he was moved forwards and the rest became history. Countless Champions Leagues at Real Madrid. Bale became one of the best British players of all time. You've even got Liverpool's Mo Salah. A lot of people won't know this but back in his academy days, Salah used to be a left back. People are now starting to respect Saka at a different level. He's entering different conversations and that future is going to be at the Emirates Stadium. Fabrizio Romano confirms that Arsenal star Bukayo Saka will sign a new contract very soon. No changes in the plan as the verbal agreement is in place since February. There were actually three clubs, two from England and one abroad, that were monitoring Saka's contract situation for a long time but no way he is staying. There's always been the rumours that Chelsea's Todd Bowley wanted to sign Bukayo Saka but who was that other English club, Man City, Liverpool? It doesn't matter because Bukayo is staying and he is getting a hefty contract. As Sammy Mockbell confirms, Bukayo Saka's new Arsenal contract is set to earn him up to £300,000 a week, making him easily Arsenal's highest earner. It's important to point out that it's also including bonuses and base wages closer to £200,000 a week and it's also about time that Arsenal give their players what they deserve. In fact, out of all the big six, Arsenal have by far the lowest wage bill. Not only do Arsenal have the means to do so, but also we have to learn from previous mistakes. The likes of Ramsey, Van Persie, Alexis Sanchez left for either peanuts or absolutely nothing because Arsenal weren't proactive with their contracts. As Arsenal Invincible Cola Torre says, my first advice to Arsenal is to make sure that Bukayo Saka signs for 10 years. He's nowhere near his peak at 21 and he's currently performing at a level up there with the very best. One of five players in Europe with over 10 goals and 10 assists. Look at the players on the list, Neymar, Lionel Messi, Kvaratskhelia. Not only is his output amazing, but also he's changing games. He's only behind Lionel Messi in terms of goal contributions when the score is level. Saka is not just stat padding, this guy is winning games and points for Arsenal, pushing us towards a Premier League title. Historically, he's up there with the best. Here are the best under 21 Premier League goals and assist seasons. Saka is only two behind Cesc Fabregas, three behind Wayne Rooney, with 10 games left to play. And two more than Ryan Giggs means that Saka is the most productive under 21 winger in Premier League history. And Arteta even says if you ask me if he has room for improvement, I would say yes a lot. He's never satisfied, he always wants more, and he can still do a lot of things better and more efficiently. The star boy is shining, his performances are defining, but also, do Arsenal need to be careful? Is there a risk of burn? out. As his graphic shows before his 20th birthday, Saka had made 140 Arsenal appearances, 111 starts and over 10,000 minutes. That's more than the likes of Wayne Rooney, Iron Robin and Ian Hazard. And now he's 21, Arsenal are more reliant on him than ever before and that's where I think some Arsenal fans are getting a bit scared. But at the same time we have to understand that football has evolved. The recovery technology is better than ever before and that's why you also have the likes of Pedri, Bellingham and Mbappe on the same list. But Arsenal also realise they need to have other options and that's why you have 
Eintracht Frankfurt winger Jesper Lindström. According to reports in Germany, Arsenal are among the English clubs trying to sign Jesper Lindström. Eintracht Frankfurt are already preparing for the departure of the 23-year-old. Price tag 30 million euros, with Arsenal and three other UK clubs in the race. Lindström is a player that we've spoken about in the past and at 22 years of age, he's actually older than Bukayo Saka. A lot of his minutes have come on the right-hand side. He's got that pace, he's got that technical ability. He's not as explosive as Bukayo Saka, but his numbers are steady. Seven goals and two assists in the Bundesliga. What I see here is a tidy player that has a decent ability to carry the ball and fundamentals that Mikel Arteta can work with. But at this stage of the project, are the other wide forwards that Arsenal should be targeting, especially another one in the Bundesliga and that being Moussa Diaby. But now let's talk about Mikel Arteta's five-phase plan. Ever since becoming Arsenal manager in December 2019, Mikel Arteta had a five-stage plan. An idea to make Arsenal serious again, change the culture of the club and the direction, and awake a sleeping giant. In a recent interview, Arteta said, We are now at phase three. Phase three is a period of time, and we are a little bit ahead of schedule. It's something a little bit private. It's just my understanding and vision of what the club was, and what we want to capture and develop. Let's be completely honest, at the start of the season, no one saw us competing for a title. The objective was Champions League football and Arsenal are now going to get that comfortably. That's a positive and now it gives us a massive opportunity to enter phase four. And I think that's all about signing the final pieces. No more wholesale changes. Next year competing for the title once again and fighting in the Champions League, it's time for Arsenal to add level races. Less about quantity, more about quality and that's where you have expensive names like Declan Rice. As Jack Wilshere says, he's a midfielder who can do anything. I'm looking forward to wherever he goes. I hope it's Arsenal because Mikel can develop him. Not only is he elite at winning duels, I think sometimes fans underrate Declan Rice's ball playing ability. At West Ham he's playing at a pragmatic team but even then 52 passes per game, 89% passing accuracy. That's not far off Thomas Partey. And so far he's only played under David Moyes and Gareth Southgate with all the respect. Mikel Arteta is a superior tactician. You put Declan Rice into Arsenal's elite system and you could see him thrive at a different level. And after that performance against Ukraine, here he was seen alongside Alexander Zinchenko. And this video here has caused quite a frenzy, with some fans speculating Zinchenko's asking Rice if he's joining. But I am not a professional lip reader, neither are the Arsenal fans, so let's take that with a pinch of salt, put it to one side and see how things develop over the next few weeks and months. Arsenal also may want to send a forward. And according to Simon Collins, Arsenal have scouted players in a physical striker mould, tracking the likes of Dominic Calvert-Lewin, Dusan Vlaovic, Tammy Abraham, Victor Ossiman, and have even taken notes of 20-year-old Rasmus Holland. Arsenal are looking to build a team that have different ways of playing and I can see why we might want to sign a physical striker. Gabriel Jesus and Trossard are false lines and they're not really goal scorers. We need to also have variation and that's where Arsenal might want to sign a devastating physical striker. The name that stands out is definitely Victor Ossiman. 21 goals for Napoli in 22 starts in the Serie A, 4 goals in 5 games in the Champions League. Arsenal have been long-term admirers and Ossiman has recently revealed on almost joining Arsenal at 18. He says, I spoke with Arsene Wenger and he wanted me to come to Arsenal but it was not the best option at the time. In 2016, Arsene Wenger saw a vision and he tried to sign 3 Nigerian players. One was signed and that was Kalechi and Wakali. But we also wanted to sign Victor Ossiman and Samuel Chukwesi. Ossiman instead chose to go to Belgium, then France, and now is thriving in the Serie A. What Arsene Wenger saw back in 2016, the entire world is seeing now. Ossiman is a devastating forward that has so much to offer. Can Arsenal though sign Victor Ossiman in the current Arsenal team when you've got Gabriel Jesus, Trossard and a returning follower in Balogun? What Arsenal have with Gabriel Jesus is a versatile forward. Yes, he excels as a false nine, but as we've seen at his time at Man City, he's also able to play as a right winger and left winger. So Jesus is always going to be an important Arsenal player. Can he play alongside Ossiman, of course, would be a different question. But Mikel Arteta does want a physical forward. So comment down below whether it's Ossiman or someone else who is is that target man profile that Arsenal should be signing. Now let's move on to the other Arsenal news today and starting off with the Arsenal home kit going into next season. We've seen designs in the past but this seems to be the most reliable and here you guys have it with a gold outlining and a thunder like design going through it. It's definitely different and it's caused a bit of controversy. Some fans absolutely love it, some fans don't and here it is on Gabriel Martinelli. A gold outlining kit for potential champions dare I say and maybe back in the Champions League. Personally it's growing on me. But what do you guys make of this kit? Would you buy it? Give me your ratings out of 10. Let's now talk about Arsenal's rivals Tottenham Hotspur and their ex-manager Antonio Conte. As on the day that Mikel Arteta turned 41, Tottenham have sacked their manager and Antonio Conte. And that now means that Jose Mourinho and Antonio Conte, two serial winners that had both won a trophy at every single club they managed for at least 50 games, 
except for Tottenham Hotspur. As some will say, it's the history of the Tottenham. There was once upon a time before Conte went to Spurs that people wanted Arteta out and Conte in. But Arsenal instead trusted their process, they trusted Mikel Arteta. And look how that's paying off now, Arsenal are fighting for a title when Spurs right now are in disarray. But in terms of Mikel Arteta, he is on to bigger and better things. And having turned 41 years of age, if he wins the title this year, he'd become the youngest in Premier League history. The current record stands with Jose Mourinho, who won it when he was 42. With 10 games left, should Arsenal fans start dreaming? Well, according to ex-Arsenal striker Robin Van Persie, he believes that Arsenal will win the Premier League this season. And even the recently retired Meza Ozil says, I wish the fans of the club the best because they've always been very supportive towards me. I would be happy for Arsenal fans if they could celebrate their Premier League title in the summer because they deserve it. But that is the video there and there. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed. If you have, don't forget to smash a like and also subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you want to follow your boy in all of his social medias, then the links are down below in the description. But that was all of today's latest Arsenal news and we are now entering the crunch end of the season. It's serious time. It's nervous time and for us to find hopefully it's rewarding time for something that could be so special i will see you next time take care of yourselves keep smiling and love it